All right, it's Flame and Dragon Friday. It's time to get yeah, excited. Yeah, it is. Before we get started, I do want to say some. I do want to make a correction. So remember when we came on here, I can't even remember what day it was, and I told the story about the Haley Zega, the missing girl with the imaginary friend, right? Uh, so I heard that story. God, I, the guy on YouTube, he's huge. I, I heard him tell it while, while I was driving. That's how I passed the time when I'm not doing things about sports. And there was a, so I did this story, and then all of a sudden, the real girl, Haley Zega, did a stitch on TikTok. And basically said there were some details that I got wrong. So there, there wasn't a book when she got discovered or whatever. Uh, you can check her out on TikTok. So I do want to say, Haley, we're glad you're okay. All right. For the few details I messed up, I'm sorry. How dare you? I know. I know. She basically accused you? me of being everything but in the, in ISIS. So, you know, at the end really? of the day. Did she yeah. really? What did yes. she say about you? Yes. Oh, said that I'm spreading misinformation. Like, like this like affects everybody. Like it just, but that's a story for another day. And she was like, in 2023, spreading misinformation. It's just, it can't happen. Like, okay, let's, let's realize what you're talking about and then like stuff that actually affects people in their real life. But I'm a man, I'm a man of integrity. Chivalry is not dead. So we'll say any details that I got wrong. Haley, we're glad you're okay. Apologize. And also tell Alicia we said what's up. But come. I don't, I don't know that girl. Yeah, I, I don't know that story. You don't know that story? I mean, I mean, no, you told it, but yeah, I, yeah. And I, I told it just from this. Yeah. yeah, they were on Dayline NBC like 20 years ago or whatever. I just just heard it and just regurgitated what I heard on here. I don't know the girl personally, but she came over. Go follow her on TikTok. Seems like she got some good stuff over there. Really? I mean, she's gonna say that then just a nice plug for me. That's a real gentleman move. Look, she look, look, a gentleman move for you. Hey, we don't we don't have enough gentlemen anymore because everybody's trying to be the same, right? Chivalry's not. I open the door. Mm -hmm. I'll admit when I'm wrong. Very rare. Probably not about sports, but I'll admit when I'm wrong. And I'll let you know when I'm right. Not that much, but sometimes. Have you ever admitted when you're wrong? Yes. I don't think you have. Yes. I don't yes. think you have. I can't remember a time. You can't remember a time? The entire time I've been your brother. I don't think I have. Wow, that's... Uh, Unless you're around Reed. Which has been your whole life. Yes. Unless you're around Reed. You'll admit when you're wrong when you're around Reed. So you've heard me admit when I'm wrong. I don't know, I don't know if that counts. So you're a liar. I don't know if that counts. Nick Saban zeroes in on Tommy Reese to be Alabama's new offensive coordinator. Georgia tied in. Brock Bowers foregoes accepting collective NIL money, allowing his teammates to cash in instead. And we're taking your live calls at 8.15 a.m. Eastern. I'm Jake Crane. It's Flaming Dragon Friday. Don't get burnt. This is Crane and Company. Reports came out yesterday that Notre Dame offensive coordinator Tommy Reese has been offered the same position for Nick Saban in Alabama, and right now it's looking like he's going to take it. Now, there will be some fans that hate the hire, but there are two important things that Alabama fans need to know, so listen up. Number one, to be honest, it doesn't really matter who the offensive coordinator is at Alabama. They are running a version of what Saban wants on offense. It has to fit in the parameters of what Nick wants. Hell, the OCs coming in even have to change their terminology to marry up with what Saban and the defense calls it to make things more efficient, whether it's breaking down film or other aspects like that. Now, Tommy Reese will fall in line completely given where he is in his coaching career and his age. It's just the truth. Number two, from a play calling standpoint, which Tommy will call the plays, he is going to try and get Alabama back to smashing the ball on the ground and building the passing game off of it with boots, waggles, all type of play action game. Now, the tide has turned into a very pass-heavy offense lately. And to be honest, they're not really that physical, which is not how Nick Saban built up this monster. He's smart enough to be malleable, but he also needs to get back to the identity that, that has gotten him there. Now, they have become somewhat one-dimensional on offense. And in the SEC, that's a death sentence. Doesn't matter, lethal injection or the chair, you're going out like a sweet muffin. Now, it may not be the sexiest hire, and Alabama fans will complain about it. But I think it's a much-needed identity check for the Tide. And like I have said on multiple occasions, I am not going to question Nick Saban hiring coordinators, just like I don't question what ingredients Guy Fieri uses or that one chick who makes food for the harvesting farmers. All right, and on that note, I'm going to bring in a guy who's now related, not by blood, but by marriage, to a former Alabama quarterback and knows a lot about offense, That's and true. David Cohn, who's going to be with me on this journey of hitting the under on not using... 
Flaming Dragons mm. Gubby. And you know who's sitting to my right? It's Friday, baby. You got it. Ah! <laughs> this is Flaming Dragon. Uh, hey, Dragon. What is the under today? Three and a half. Three and a half. So we're both. Three, three and, and a half. half. Both of us three and a half. I look, yes, I, I put it to the people. That's what I do. I put it to the people when it comes to this. They wanted three and a half. After Jake's performance last week, right? Really Which came well, I think clutch. we stopped at two. You said it twice, maybe. I know the week before was like eight, but we're going three and a half. This, 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 this today, hey, it's boys. me and you today now, David. Okay. It's me and so you. So we don't even acknowledge We're my, Well, he'll be no, there. We don't even acknowledge He'll be there, but him. I'm going to be looking at you, Please and I will not compliment you. No, we don't even anyone. acknowledge you. <laughs> at all? No, or any bets that you made. Uh, or any, <laughs> anything like that. He's not here. Become another person. Uh, I want to talk about this Tommy Reese situation because I, I want people to understand, and this is true. Okay, this is true. Whether it's Bill O'Brien, whether it's Lane Kiffin, the offensive coordinator at Alabama has to adjust to what Nick Saban wants to do offensively. Now, he has given leeway to guys. I'm not saying they don't call the plays and come up with the game plan. But whether it's terminology, whether it's installation, whether it's identity, Nick Saban has a formula, and they've kind of gotten away from it a little bit, David. Do you think this hire is one where Tommy Reese can be creative, but he knows we have to be able to run the ball to have success? This is a true college ground-and-pound style offense. Look, I agree with you on one thing. If Nicholas Lou Saban made the hire, then yes, I'm not going to sit here and question it. I'm not going to come out here and say that this is a bad hire and, you know, trying to uh, I, I mean, I can understand, I guess, why some Alabama fans would be a little bit surprised. I would, too. This probably wouldn't be in my top 50 names that I've heard or top 50 names that I would pick for the new OC at Alabama. Um, I think Tommy Reese can do a good job. The point that you made about it doesn't matter who the OC is because Nick Saban's going to call the offense. Well, not I call the with, offense, but I, I, his, I, I, uh, his yeah, identity. Tommy will call it. I agree with that more on the defensive side of the ball. Because Nick Saban is, you know, mm -hmm. one That's of the true. greatest defensive minds we've seen in the game. On the offensive side of the ball, I mean, there's a reason this guy brought in Lane Kiffin and sort of dealt with his personality, took the risk of rehabilitating Steve Sarkeesian, you know, brought in Bill O'Brien. So especially when you're not returning a Heisman Trophy quarterback like they were this past season with Bryce Young, I don't know. I think that Tommy Reese is going to have an uphill battle, to be honest with you. And, and I'll tell you another thing. I understand the allure of going and coaching for Nick Saban at Alabama, but... To be honest, he has a good thing going at Notre Dame. I mean, Sam Hartman coming in to be your quarterback, you know, year number two under Boy, Marcus Carr's Freeman. Grandson. What's he going to do? There you go. <laughs> I mean, look, they have, look, it's not a crazy thing for, uh, for uh, Tommy Reese to say, you know what? I think maybe I'll actually turn this down and stay at my alma mater. One, we got a good thing going under Marcus Freeman and Sam Hartman coming in. I think we can put up some big numbers. I mean, they didn't even rank in the top. I think they were 60th in total offense last season. It's surprising to me to see Nick Saban go get a guy whose, you know, offense is 60th in the country. That's that's just my point. Yeah, well, they did finish first in their conference in all categories last year. That's fine. On offense. <laughs> that's uh, funny. I, 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 I that's do want to make sure people understand. I'm not saying that Nick Saban calls the plays on offense. I think what has happened, and, and with Bill O'Brien, when you do have kind of an older guy like that that's been a coach in the NFL, the, the identity, it's not like Alabama didn't have run plays in the mm -hmm. playbook. It's not like they were just going out there saying, all right, we're going to throw it 65 times. But Bill O'Brien would get in the game and literally it would it would be pass, pass, pass. They were leaning on Bryce Young. Pass, pass, pass. And the point you make about Bryce leaving and a new quarterback having to come in, that run game's got going to be huge for whoever that quarterback is because they didn't get one from the transfer portal. So it's going to be somebody that they've developed, whether that be Jalen Mil Milrow or, or somebody like that. So I want to make sure we understand and I do a good job of explaining the difference between calling plays and the identity. I think they shifted so much from a game day identity of running the ball down your throat. Mm -hmm. And you look at the teams that are having success, what can they do? Run the ball. It will always be that way. When Alabama was coming up with Nick Saban, they were running the ball and using play action to kill you. Uh, Flaming Dragon. Yeah, that's right. What are your thoughts on the okay, well, potential? This is the thing Tommy with me. Notre Dame, you're kind of in a good spot once you're losing coaches to the SEC. All right, you must be doing pretty good lately, let's be honest. I know one of them was your head coach, but I'm kind of worried about this hire. I mean, we can go back. You want to play smash mouth football. When Alabama played smash mouth football, what were they doing on the other side of uh, other side of the ball? Killing people. Mm -hmm. Killing people. Your defense was absolutely every year studded out. We saw that Bama defense last year. Not that great. Not the year before that. Not that great. They're bim but don't break, but giving up a lot of yards. So we're going to be Tommy Reese in here with a, with a quarterback we don't know who's really not established as a passer, right? Great runner in Milrow. Really can't go through a lot of progressions. I just think that Nick Saban, the whole thing, was being a step ahead on these offenses, right? Being the spread RPO type of offense that, that you can outscore people. 
If you're going to bring Tommy Reese in to, to play, uh, to be the play caller, you're going to rely a lot more on that defense than you're going to rely on that offense. So you need to bring back that old Bama defense if you're going to be successful. And successful at Bama is what? Winning natties. I don't hate the hire, but I'm not super stoked about it. And I think if you're Tommy Reese, you'd have been in a great situation at Notre Dame bringing in Sam Hartman with what you did last year. I think they ended up, it might be 60 or 45th in total offense. But, you know, you lose to Ohio State, you lose to Marshall, but what were you missing? Your, your starting quarterback got hurt week two, mm -hmm. right? So it's going to be a tough deal, tough sledding for the rest of the season. So I'm not crazy about the hire, but I'm not upset about it either. Yeah, it's it's not one, like I said, that's going to be like a, a, a page turner, you know, or, or like a, a showstopper or whatever. I want to hear what the Booster Club and you in the comments. Uh, Daily Wire chat, obviously uh, uh, YouTube as well. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. But before we get to the Booster Club, all right, Alabama's trying to get back to their old self, you know, not feeling like their old self these days. I mean, men, are you feeling like you're less like your old self these days? David, I know you're not. Blaine might be a little bit. Yes! Don't have the edit. Yes! Oh! Yes. All right. Thank you, okay. Eugenics. Okay. Does it Thank count? You. Okay. Does it count in the middle of a new Genix? Yes, it does. Uh, yes, all it right. Is. Let me get through it. My bad cone. Uh, my bad cone. I can't even say anybody's name now. I'm like a, like a like a beat dog. All right. Yeah. You need to do something about it if you don't feel like your old self with new Genix Total T Testosterone Booster. Because as we, as we age, our body loses free testosterone, our energy drops, our libido falls, and we start to lose muscle. Uh, Blaine has a great testimony on that. So with new Genix Total T Testosterone Booster. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We're already done. Here we go. I'm done. No, I no, no. Mean, We're done. We're done with it. We're done with it. Help you turn back. Here's what you do. Go text C-R-A-I-N. That's Crane to 231-231 for a complimentary bottle of Nugenix Total Tea. Text now, and you'll also get a complimentary bottle of Nugenix Thermo and their most powerful fat incinerator ever. David. Ever? Absolutely ever? free. So text C-R-A-I-N to 231-231. Two three one. That's C R A I N to two three one two three one. David, I'm sorry, dog. <laughs> don't apologize. That's on me. We're hey, not doing it. Don't again. apologize, here, yes. hand, man. It's too late. Grab my hand. Grab Scott my hand. Say. All right. The rest of the way, we got one more. Huh? We got one more we can get away with. All right. Booster Club. What are you saying? I'm not even looking in that direction. All right. Let's go to Ryan Gade with a five dollar donation. Thank you, Ryan. We really appreciate it. Um, happy Flaming Dragon Friday. Yes. He says, give me the over today. Smart man. <laughs> Don't think Jay can repeat what he did last week, but would love to be proved wrong. I, I am. All Not right. a good start. I am mad. <laughs> Not a good start. I am here. I am now. All right, let's go to Chris Foster with a $5 donation. With the offseason of quarterback carousel about to heat up, how come it seems no one is a good fit for the Redskins? And that is their name. David, thank you for that. By the way, I saw that yes. South Park episode when they did the startup company and changed it to the Redskins. It's hilarious. You know, when I look at Washington, I I'm going to go back and say what I said during the year. I don't think Taylor Heineke is that bad of a player, man. Like, I don't, if you look at Taylor Heineke, he should have made the Pro Bowl or whatever the hell they're doing this weekend instead of uh, Huntley from the Ravens. I don't think Heineke is, is like this hot dog water trash can quarterback that some people are making him out to be. I'd rather have Taylor Heineke than, the, he's a better player than Russell Wilson last year. You want to be honest? And look at the weapons he had. It's not like they were bur busting out of the gym. I would have taken Tyler, Taylor Heineke over Russell Wilson last year. Now, is Taylor Heineke the long-term answer year. for, for the, the Redskins out there in Washington, the commanders, whatever the hell you want to call them? No, you need to try and get a better player at that position. Mm -hmm. But he's not the worst. If it's me, what I'm looking at Hendon Hooker. That's who I'm looking at if I'm the commanders. I just I, I feel like it'd be a good fit, but I know what they're going to do. Anthony Richardson. They're going to get Anthony Richardson, yeah. which, again, it's a big gamble. But if it pays off, that dude's ceiling is, is main deck of the Titanic large. It just goes up to the side. What sky. about Derek Carr? Huh? Derek? Yeah, what about I him? think he's going the Saints. Really? Yeah. But, I, again, Derek Carr is a good quarterback, but I don't trust him when it counts. Mm -hmm. But to me, I think the, the Redskins need to go and get a quarterback from this draft. But, again, but again, if they say, you know what, no, we want to keep supplementing the roster, Carson Wentz should be done playing football. He shouldn't get another chance. Eventually, you're, you're not good enough to get another chance, and Carson Wentz should not get another chance, in my opinion. When I look at Taylor Heineke, if the, if the Redskins said, you know what, this year, let's roll with Taylor Heineke, and if it goes bad, let's go get, let's get a quarterback from next year's draft, mm -hmm. where they're loaded with quarterbacks as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're, you're going to have guys like Sam Hartman coming out, and Caleb Williams, and Drake May. I can go down the list. Jaden Daniels, guys like that. It's going to be interesting to see how they progress. But it's not like there's going to be, the barrel's going to be empty next year. So I think the, the Redskins can kind of go either way here and be right. But I'm sick of the Taylor Heineke slander. 
Taylor Heineke did have a higher completion percentage than Russell Wilson this, this season and a higher touchdown to interception ratio. So Tyler, Taylor Heineke and Carson Wentz are back to back in the NFL stats from this previous season. Here's Heineke, 1,800 passing yards, 62.2% completion percentage, 12 TDs, six picks. Carson Wentz right under him, 1,700 passing yards, 62.3% completion percentage, 11 touchdowns, but through nine picks. Yeah, and look, Carson Wentz, when it matters, he's gonna make a catastrophic mistake. Two things happen to Carson Wentz when it goes bad. He doesn't just get in injured if he gets if he gets injured. He doesn't just, you know, sprain his ankle or he broke his finger. He like rips his knee out that somehow hit his hamstring that hit his spine. He's out for eight months. And when he has a catastrophe on the field, he's this is why I say Dak Prescott has a little bit of that Carson Wentz syndrome that when it really matters, the turnovers don't just hurt you, they kill you. So would you take Taylor Heineke over Dak Prescott? No. No, no, no. I'm not saying Dak Prescott's Carson Wentz. Do not get that confused. Okay. I'm not a big Dak Prescott fan, but I don't dislike See, him See, this much. this gets to my point of what I was saying about Daniel Jones. Taylor Heineke is a great option when you are expected to be a bottom three team in the NFL. Then Taylor Heineke can lift you. What happens when you're projected to be a top three team in the NFL? Well, you are you going to be Heineke. are you going to be projected to be a top three team in the NFL with Taylor Heineke at quarterback? No. I don't know. I wonder if Taylor Heineke's like the stopgap guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if you look around, there's a couple teams in the league this year. Like, I look at the Bucks, right? The Buccaneers. Gabbert, no. It's gonna, if it's going to be anybody that's on that roster, it's going to be Trask. Kyle Trask. Why do you not look at that and say, okay, we're really not in a terrible spot. I know we won the division. We don't have a super high pick. All right, what if we just let decide to rebuild? Let's ride with, with Trask. If it ends up being good, then great. If we found our guy, fantastic with Kyle Trask. But if not, and we're terrible... That's fine. We'll just have a really high draft pick the next year and go get a quarterback. So to me, that's not tanking. That, that's, that's different than saying, let's go get a bad player at quarterback, or we know we have a bad player at quarterback, and let's roll him out there. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm very interested to see how some of these teams play this and try and set themselves up for the long run. Because again, that's why with the Saints, go, going and getting Derek Carr does make sense. Because if you look around the rest of the division, the Panthers, who I'm bullish on Matt Corral, just like you. Yeah. Remember, we, we talked about that all offseason. Do not sleep on Matt Corral. But the Falcons, Desmond Ritter, I'm not super duper impressed. I mean, so uh, that division, when you look at it as a whole, I don't think the Saints would be crazy to do that because they're in a different position. And the Buccaneers have pieces to move. You have pieces where you could really, you know, knock down that roster and rebuild it using some of the pieces and keeping some of the young guys. But that's what I find fascinating. All right, Flaming Dragon. All right, two more weeks with a $5 donation. He says, Nick Saban digs deep to try and find someone to fit. I feel like where Reese is in his career, he won't challenge Nick when he's yeah. ready to ground and pound. Dave, what do you think? Oh, well, I, look, the, the same point as before. I think we're dealing with a supply and demand issue, to be honest with you here. Like I said, do you think Tommy Reese would be Nick Saban's first choice or even in his top no. five if he was making this hire a month ago? No. 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 Right? Well, I, I, my, I wonder how happy Notre Dame fans are because the feeling I get, because if I'm Marcus Freeman, some people are like, oh, you know, no, uh, Alabama steals the coach from Notre Dame. I, I don't know if Marcus Freeman and them are really that upset about it. But like, I, I don't think they're, they're devastated hmm. about Tommy Reese leaving. I have not seen one Notre Dame fan who was devastated about Tommy Reese leaving. And I'm not saying Tommy Reese is a bad coach. But again, he's getting put into the machine. The whole goal of, of being at a place in high-level college football is turning it into a machine, not just for the players, but for the coaches, right? Just like Alabama signing this number one recruiting class. Tom Luganville, our, our buddy, made a great point. If anybody else signed this recruiting class, we'd be talking about it's the greatest recruiting class of all time. Mm. But since Alabama did it, we're, we're just conditioned to... That, that's normal. That's normal for Nick Saban. Oh, they're pissed off about last year, whatever, whatever. So you feed great players into that machine. It turns them into NFL players. You take coaches, you mold them, whether you call it the rehabilitation clinic or whatever, and it spits out better opportunities for them. But, but again, I'm 100% with two more weeks. Tommy Reese is going to be a small part in the big machine. He is not going to be out there telling Nick Saban no, or we need to throw it, or this, that, and the other. It's going to be, yes, sir, what do I need to do? Thank you, sir, may I have another? That's what it's going to be. All right, let's go to two more weeks again with the $5 donation. Wow, four more in I said, I'm more concerned about Todd Grantham may wind up the D coordinator, but I like his aggressiveness with our pass rush. The thing about Todd Grant Grantham, he's going to blitz every play. Yeah, like you said, surprise, we're blitzing. Yeah, every play. <laughs> and I, I, Todd Grantham, look, there's been ups and downs. He had great times at Florida. He had bad times at Florida. I just, again, I'm going to default back to me 
trusting Nick Saban and realizing that Alabama has some of the best players in the country and they're bringing in some more of the best players in the country. And a lot of times you can hide poor coaching with fantastic players as long as they just don't overdo it. And, and look, <laughs> say what you want about Todd Grantham. All right, you think he's coming in there and blitzing all the time on that defense that Nick Saban's running? No, 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 no. You, you won't think have the, to with that front four. Yeah, you think the OC doesn't have a lot of power at Alabama? Let me introduce you to the defensive coordinator, <laughs> which is Nick Saban's bag. Let's True. get to one more before we go to rapid fire. Right, let's go to Matty Ice, 1994. says, can we do predict predictions for these uh, QBs that are still available? Derek Carr, Jimmy G, A-Rodge, and Lamar. Where do y'all think they end up and why? Okay, I think Derek Carr ends up at the same. I like it. I don't have any inside knowledge on that. I can just feel it. Part of me thinks Lamar Jackson is going to return to the Ravens mm -hmm. because they let go of Greg Roman, and I think they're going to go get somebody that has a system that better fits Lamar Jackson. He needs weapons around him. We'll see what they do in free agency or anything like that. Uh, we know they've added pieces to the defense, and they paid Roquan Smith. I think uh, Aaron Rodgers, I'm so <laughs> I don't understand it, but it just it's starting to feel like he's going to the Jets. Mm. It's really starting to feel like he's going to the Jets. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you, you look out there and you look at the, the 49ers, who I think are going to ride with Brock Purdy, so that takes away Aaron, Ro uh, Aaron Rodgers from going to the 49ers. Uh, I think he is going to end up going to the Jets with that elite defense. Maybe they try and go get one more piece. Do you go get Odell? You try and go get Odell and add him to Garrett Wilson and Conklin or uh, because that defense is going to be Super Bowl worthy. I just don't understand if you're Aaron Rodgers why I would spend the equity that I've built up. And the Jets will eat that. The Jets will eat that money. The Jets have money. Okay, let's, yeah. let's not act yeah. like they, they don't. I just feel like if Aaron's going to end up anywhere, the biggest question for me is, is Jimmy G going to Miami? Mm, Jimmy, I'm Who, go is, to the, is, Jimmy if G you're Miami, go you got to do something, right? Bucks. Jimmy G might go to the Bucks. The Bucks if, seems like a more natural spot. Well, well, again, again, if you're if you're sitting there lo looking and, and you're Miami, all right. Obviously, you know it'd be great to get Aaron Rodgers. It'd be unbelievable to get Lamar Jackson. But if you want to keep the pieces you have, it's going to be tough to pay somebody what they want to get paid, especially somebody like Lamar to go to Miami. But but and you don't need a race car quarterback. You just need a steady car. The engine works. The, the tires have been rotated. It's going to get me from point A to point B. You don't need a NASCAR. You don't even need a fast car. You just don't need an ass car, mm. all right? Or a Derek or car. Hurt, or hurt. Or a Derek car. <laughs> and Tua yeah, did come out and say he is returning next year. Say that again? Tua came out and said he is returning But if you're the Dolphins, year. I can't sure. trust you. For sure. I, I don't trust Tua. And if, I, I think I see Jimmy G to the Bucks. I think Jimmy G ends up at the Bucks. I think if Aaron does go to the Jets, um, I think the Jets are going to draft Njigba from Ohio State. That's another piece with Garrett Wilson. And I wouldn't be surprised if they go after DeAndre. Well, I'm hearing Jackson Smith and Jigba's falling down the charts like the Dixie Chicks when they came out and said that stuff about George Bush. That's that's what I've heard. Hmm. That he's falling really? fast. Somebody said he's a wide receiver three. That, well, that he'd I be trust. a really good get for a wide receiver three, I promise well, you. Well, I'm just I'm just whether what he believes. Just, again, really I'm not good. he's really good at running routes and I wonder if it, well, I wonder how bad that injury is. Like if it's like there's a long-term mm. potential on the injury. Well, I, I, again, you marry that with not going and, and playing and things, which I think that was out of his control. I think it was a legit injury. Uh, mm. It's just, again, that's just what I'm seeing. He may end up going the ninth pick Man, The only one to me is the Aaron Rodgers thing. I still don't understand it. I called him to the Titans last season. He signs the three-year, $150 million contract. Like, now is the weird time that it would be to leave. And then on the Bucks situation, Jimmy G actually is kind of making sense to me to the Bucks over there, Flaming Dragon, because... The Bucks know a lot more about Kyle Trask than we know right now. Mm -hmm. They know how he's be, been progressing. See, for us, he's been sitting behind Tom Brady ever since he had a stellar year at Florida. We don't really know what Kyle Trask is capable of. I think the organization already knows whether or not Kyle Trask has starter potential. And if so, if he does, Jimmy G is still not a bad guy to bring in. Mm -hmm. um, and if he doesn't, then you have someone who can at least be a starting quarterback in Jimmy Garoppolo. I really want to see Aaron Rodgers to the Titans, though. I really want to see it. I really want to see but it. But if I'm Aaron Rodgers, why would I go to the Titans? I want him to go to the Titans. Hell, it's right down the street. Yeah. But, but if I'm Aaron Rodgers, why the hell would I go to the Titans with no weapons outside outside of Traylon Burks, who's less proven than Garrett Wilson, and a defense that isn't good as the Jets' defense? Unless you just told me, listen, we're about to go get some guys. All right, we're about to go get some absolute studs. Okay, then I'll rock and roll. I'll trust Mike Vrabel. But if I'm looking at the Jets and tit Titans right now, stock going forward, I'm taking the Jets. If I'm going to have to bet on somebody to, to win a Super Bowl first, it's 100% the Jets. You have a Super Bowl-worthy defense, which means if you get a guy like Aaron Rodgers and you just add a couple pieces, you don't have to be the most explosive offense of all time or the greatest show on turf. You just have to be good enough, right, to put enough points up 
to go win a Super Bowl. And we've seen teams that do that. But, Coney, let's get to rapid fire as we're staying under the under on Flame Dragon. Let's Dragons do Friday. it. All right. Uh, more good news for Alabama. They have decided to extend head basketball coach Nate Oates. Yeah. Yeah, you have to. I mean, let, let's, again, you know, we always talk about the arms race in the SEC or in college football in general. Go look at what's going on in college basketball. I mean, you talk about $4 million a year, I think, is what, what Nate's going to get. Yeah. And look, uh, he's earned it. Uh, $5 million. $5 million a year. He has earned it. He has really elevated Alabama. But I think all of this that you're seeing between Alabama and Auburn right now, you know who started it? Bruce Pearl. Mm. And, and the Alabama fans will tell you that. Bruce Pearl made basketball, people care about basketball in the state again. And it's one of the best things that has happened to the SEC. And we've seen it around the SEC, this, this kind of uh, contagious love for college basketball now. There's not a night off. I mean, hell, even look at what Mike White's doing at Georgia. Hell, they care about basketball now. Missouri, you know, South Carolina, I know they've got a ways to go. Florida just beat Tennessee. There are no nights off in the SEC anymore. And it's not just Kentucky and Florida. You can go get your ass kicked any night in the SEC. So we're seeing this. Now it is, it is the arms race for college basketball continues to increase and increase and increase. And I think it is, it is something where you got to look at the buyout. I don't know exactly what the buyout is, but fans of teams, whenever your coach has signed an extension or you sign a new coach, look at that buyout because who knows what's going to happen. You look at Texas, what's going to go on with Kentucky and Cal uh, if they, if they you know, struggle down the stretch here with the way they've struggled here lately. So, But no, it is a compliment to Nate Oates. He deserves it. He has elevated that program to a very high level. I think they're going to end up building a new arena. They need to. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of one that's similar in size to Neville Arena where Auburn is uh, or the size of what Auburn's is. So, look, it is great for the state of Alabama. I will sit here and say the state of Alabama. I mean, UAB had a big win over FAU last yeah, night who was ranked. They did. The state of Alabama in basketball, and I wish Richie Riley at South could get it going. They just can't seem to figure it out down there. It has upgraded by a million times. And I mean, think about what Derek Hall said with the, with the interview we had yesterday on the show, talking about, you know, uh, the support for the basketball team is just through the roof like it is for football now. You're trying to be at everything school. Alabama wants to be in everything school. Auburn wants to be in everything school. You want to know why every school wants to be in everything school? Because that's how you make the most money, baby. Mm -hmm. That's how you make the most money. So it's a compliment to Nate Oates. Uh, and, and he wears that blue collar hat, you know, as a coach. And I think that's something that, that's reverberated around the fan base. The extension is through the 2028-2029 season, approximately $5 million a year. So yeah, it's pretty a significant. All right, let's get to Brock Bowers. So uh, Georgia tight end Brock Bowers is going to forego any NIL collective money from Georgia. And instead, he's going to pass that off so his Georgia teammates get more. High, high IQ play. High IQ play here. And you say, Jake, what do you mean high IQ play? Brock Bowers is going to get drafted very, very high and be a very, very rich man, even though I think his family's already rich. Isn't he like from like some part of California where like the vineyards are in your backyard? I don't know. And, I don't and, know about his Like family. Tom Cruise is just walking around. He's, I, I think so. But it is a... This is going to look so good to NFL scouts. Can, it's going to be a story for a while. Like Brock Bowers, you can get an amazing player, a Swiss Army knife, a guy that can block, a guy that can catch, a guy that can run legitimate routes. You can put him on the inside in 11 or 12 personnel. You can put him on the outside and have him run routes. Hell, you can put him at slot. He can go out there and be a legit blocker. And guess what? He's not a douche. He took, <laughs> he's, he's not the guy who nobody showed up to his birthday party on draft day. Everybody's showing up to Brock, Brock, per, uh, Brock Purdy, Brock Bowers' birthday. A lot of pe more people are showing up to Brock Purdy's birthday nowadays, too. But with Brock Bowers, this is a great, this is a great move. It's a great look, uh, and it's a high-IQ play. And Georgia needed this a little bit. Mm -hmm. With all the negativity on the yeah, outside with Stetson weeks. and everything yeah. that's happened, this is a good story, a feel-good story, but it is a very high IQ and a long-term play, in my opinion, by Brock Bowers. High IQ play even beyond his NFL draft status, okay? Because <clears throat> obviously he's going to get NIL deals directly from sponsors, which is what name, image, and likeness deals should yeah. be, not the collective. But also, think about this. Now, I'm not going to pretend to know the details of Georgia's NIL collectives, but with a lot of these, if you accept money from the football programs collective, you are signing over your name, image, and likeness in perpetuity. Yeah. So I, I don't know Georgia specifically, but this could be a situation where Brock Bowers is saying, one, I don't want to do that because I'm going to get a lot of money yeah. from directly from the sponsor, similar to like a Bryce Young, Dr. Pepper situation, right? Two, it just allows me to help my teammates out 
Plus, you add on the fact that he's going to get drafted high. All of those together, big, big I, high IQ players. That's a there. good point. And some players have to. And it's just refreshing, man. It's refreshing nowadays when everything's about NIL money. I want this. I want that. To have a guy who says, no, uh, use it for something else. It's kind of like a quarterback in the NFL taking a pay cut, right? Mm. Taking a pay cut to get some more guys on the roster to come to come together and win a championship. And I think this says a lot about Kirby Smart and the way he's running that program. I know everybody's not perfect. But uh, it's more about the team than these guys individually, and I think it shows in NIL and on the field. Yeah, and uh, again, every circumstance dictates, you know, how you're going to try and get money through NIL. If you're somebody that's not as high profile as Brock Bowers, you may have to go in that collective to be able to get money. That may be your only option. But Brock Bowers is such a high profile and such a a no-name and commodity. He's a star, let's be honest. Brock Bowers is a star in college football. To me, it's, it's... It is like taking a pay cut, Flaming Dragon, but to me it's more like when the quarterback buys the offensive line like Rolexes, like all the offensive linemen Mm -hmm. or something like that, just giving them a gift. Like if I was Brock Bowers, I would say, you know what? I want to channel this money to the offensive line because those guys protect me, the quarterback, when I'm running routes. Therefore, it helps me get the ball. So I, I Yeah, like- and it's not a situation where, like, hey, if I buy all my offensive linemen Rolexes, they're going to block for me extra hard, yeah. right? Like, those guys are professionals. They're still yeah, going to And go they want to go job, to the NFL. But it still matters because yeah. they know you have, they know that you're taking into consideration all the work they're doing on the front lines, you know? Yep. So I don't know. I love this move here. Let's go to the NFL quickly. It sounds like the Arizona Cardinals are having difficulty finding a head coach because because of some of the drama with Kyler Murray. Do you buy into this, or is this just media hype? No, I I think it's true. I said this two months ago, and I actually caught some flack on social media for saying this. When they were talking about, oh, would Sean Payton go to the Cardinals? Or who would, you know, who's going to the Cardinals? Who are they going to hire after Cliff, you know, just went to Thailand with the guys from The Hangover, and then they can't find him now. But if I'm a head coach, all right, whether I'm a young guy or whether I'm I'm a guy like Sean Payton who's trying to get back in or maybe a more known name, I don't want to go work with Kyler Murray. Like, to, to me, that is a, a job where somebody who probably shouldn't be a head coach gets the head coaching job because nobody else wants to work with Kyler Murray. And you know what? He's d- Kyler Murray has done this to himself. You did this to yourself. Now, you've got to work your way back from this. And I'm not talking about the injury. That's not That has nothing to do with anything. It's his apparent lack of focus. I don't think this is made up at all. I have somebody tell me who's in the scouting realm who's involved in a certain organization that told me this is 150,000% true. Really? It is 100% true. Coaches don't want to go burn equity or or get in a situation where they have to go and be beholden to Kyler Murray. If you think about it, Kyler Murray has not earned the right to the head coach to be somewhat beholden to him. There's some quarterbacks that have. Mm -hmm. Aaron Rodgers has. Tom Brady obviously has. I can go down the list. But Kyler Murray, for damn sure, ain't one of them. And I'm not going to go have to babysit a child who won't act like a professional quarterback and put my, my career on the line and me being able to put food on my kid's table for a guy that wants to sit there and play Call of Duty 13 hours a day. So, Flaming Dragon over there, do you think this is a situation where some of these coaches who could potentially get the job in Arizona, they don't want to burn their NFL equity like Jake's talking about because they don't believe in Kyler Murray as a quarterback or because of some off-the-field like drama in his personality? Well, we have to weigh in that he did have a clause in his contract on how much film he has to watch, which is weird. It's the first time we've ever seen that. But I don't think coaches are avoid going to get a head coaching job at the Cardinals because of Kyler Murray, who's a phenomenal quarterback. If you get the right guy and knows how to work with Kyler Murray, then you will be a good team. If anything, I'm not worried about Kyler Murray. I'm worried about what's surrounding Kyler Murray. Mm-hmm. I'm worried about losing J.J. Watt on defense. I'm, I'm worried about all the pieces we're losing. The last thing, realistically, I'm worried about is Kyler Murray, who's a phenomenal quarterback. Top, maybe top 12, if we go through, we can go through the numbers. But if you would want a head coaching job to get your chance to be a coach in the NFL and you looked at me and said, hey, your quarterback's going to be Kyler Murray, I'd be stoked about it. Well, who's the only NFL team that doesn't have a head coach right now? I think it's the Cardinals and the Colts, which mm-hmm. gets to my yeah, next yeah, yeah. question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there are two spots left to fill. If you guys were both offered the head coaching jobs for the Cardinals and the Colts, which one are you taking right I'm now? I'm going the Colts. Cardinals. Gotcha. I'm going the Colts. Going the Cardinals. That offensive line may have been overpaid this year, but they're going to come back with a vengeance next year. We'll see. At least you got an offensive line that's better. The Cardinals have nothing. Mm-hmm. Who do the Cardinals have? Who do they have? Rondell Moore? Okay, congrats. Who do you got on defense? Buda Baker? Who else? Isaiah Simmons. Isaiah's a hell of a player. So the, the, But it's not like you have an elite defense. Mm-hmm. I mean, y'all can stop a nosebleed in the nurse's office last year. But what do you not have the Colts? Quarterback. A quarter. But, but guess what you can go get? You're not... 
You can well, go Levis, get a quarterback that in the makes draft. Me think, now that makes me think, because we're talking about Derek Carr to the Saints. Derek Carr to the Colts could be interesting. You mm -hmm. still have Jonathan Taylor. You can rehabilitate that offensive line to what it was a season ago. Derek Carr to the Colts could be an interesting situation. I, it'd be better than what you had. Yes. It'd be better than what you For had. Sure. I, I got a feeling C.J. Stroud's going to end up with the Colts. The, the, there you go, too. There you go. Because I think they're, they're going to move up? C.J. Stroud, yeah. I, I, what do they have right about, now, four? Everybody's talking about C.J. Stroud to the Texans, yeah, right? CJ, I think the Colts may trade up and go get C.J. Stroud with the first pick. Mm. That offensive line, I got to figure out, they weren't even close. Yeah, well, they're the, the, they're, it's, not like they, it's not like they don't have players that are proven, though. Mm -hmm. they, they just had a bad year at the same time. And again, look, Michael Pittman Jr., it's a good piece, but let's not act like he's an elite, elite wide receiver. He's To me, he he's a one of the worst wide receiver ones, and he'd be one of the best wide receiver twos. He's kind of in that in that realm to me. Uh, all right, well, let's keep going. With Stay in the NFL. Uh, a warrant has been issued for Cincinnati Bengals running back Joe Mixon's arrest. I mean, we were talking about this before the show, and Flaming Dragon said he wasn't surprised, and, and I'm not either. I watched video of Joe Mixon absolutely deck a girl in a diner in college. He should have been in prison. I don't care what was said to her. You can say the worst things to me ever. I'm not going to go out and punch a girl in the face that's sitting there with her hands down. Joe Mixon should have never been allowed in the NFL. He's a hell of a player, but there's been a lot of great players that were terrible people off the field. You pointed, according to this, you pointed a gun at somebody and said you should be popped in the head. Joe Mixon should be in prison. Joe Mixon, if Joe Mixon couldn't run the ball, he would be in jail. He should be in jail for what he did in college, for what he got suspended for, and now he should be put in prison if this is true, which I think it is. And if I'm the Bengals, at what point is enough enough, man? At what point is enough enough? You took a chance on him. You got another chance. I don't feel sorry for you, Joe Mixon, and your ass should be in prison, in my, in my opinion. Flaming Dragon? Man, this is tough because Joe Mixon is such a great player, but what we're what? talking Who about, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not surprised by this. Joe Mixon, going back to Oklahoma days, has always found a way to get in trouble. I mean, you just got out of playing for a championship game. You're pointing a gun at an old lady saying that she needs to be popped. He needs so, to be in jail. So there's it's no excuse, realistically, that football is more important, that football can overlook you committing crimes, right? It doesn't matter if you're white, black, purple, yellow. It doesn't matter. The law is the law, and Joe Mixon should not be on any roster. If the Bengals keep him on the roster, they should be fined a hell of a lot of money. Well, it, I, you, again, we've seen. if I'm the Bengals, I'm just looking over at the Patriots and wondering, what the hell else is Joe Mixon going to do? You already saw what happened with a certain tight end for the Patriots and Aaron Hernandez and, and all that stuff. I'm just telling you right now, Joe Mixon's a problem, all right? He's, he's an absolute, he's a problem on the field. The, the biggest deal is, though, he's an even bigger problem off the field, and you should be in jail. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Does, I don't care if you're blue, black, green, yellow, purple, whatever. If you do what Joe Mixon does, like I said, he should already be in jail. And, and that's my opinion. All right, last one here. We have to get to this Orange Crush situation. Mm -hmm. A fan sent us this on Twitter. So the Orange Crush is the passionate student cheering section for the University of Illinois men's basketball team. Uh, they go to one, was it one away one game? One road game every One road game every season. So they purchase 200 tickets to go see Illinois play uh, at the University of Iowa. They bought 200 tickets. They bought them legally. Um, and the University of Iowa Athletic Department notified us they invalidated all 200 tickets the Orange Crush had purchased legally. The statement reads, the University of Iowa became aware of a discounted group ticket order for the Iowa-Illinois men's basketball on behalf of the Illinois chapter of the Boys and Girls Club. And following up with that organization, it became clear that this was not factual. So the Orange Crush was refunded the money they paid for the tickets, and the 200 tickets are now going to the Boys and Girls Club. But the Orange Crush is saying, we already paid for buses and transportation and hotels that we can't get refunded, we're out like six or eight thousand dollars here. Well, again, if you tried to sneak around the Boys and Girls Club to get these tickets, then I don't feel sorry for you. Like, this is a very weird situation. To mm -hmm. me. Okay, because if you're saying you bought the tickets legally and then you find out that you got discounted tickets to the Boys and Girls Club, that's not going. If tickets are going to the Boys and Girls Club, it should go to the Boys and Girls at the Boys and Girls Club. Are the people involved with them? It's pretty, pretty open and shut, even though it's weird. Uh, this is why, and again, I don't think it's not like I was saying, oh, because just because you guys are all Illinois fans, that you don't get to come uh, uh, watch the game because we don't want to have you guys in here. And our, you got the tickets through a shady way. And it's not like the tickets are absolutely void to anyone else and they're just not going to sell those tickets. And they did refund you for the tickets, mm -hmm. they didn't tell you to buy a bus. They didn't tell you to do whatever. And to be honest with you, if I'm a business owner, 
at, at Iowa, then I'm kind of pissed that now these people aren't going to pay for hotels. Yeah. You know, if I'm somebody that are go eat at the restaurant. So it's not like they're they're gaining money by, you know, taking away where you're going to stay and where you're going to eat and things like that. It just seems like if you got it through somewhat of a nefarious way and you got it through the Boys and Girls Club, then yeah. shouldn't the tickets go to the boys and girls? Because the children love the books. <laughs> you lied. You not only lied, you lied about using it for the boys and girls. That's disgusting. Well, that's look, that's what the Iowa Athletic Department Yeah, it's, okay, uh, if they're lying about that. Allegedly. Then, I mean, that's just even worse. Why don't they take a lot of If you're though? lying, if you're using discounted tickets to get to the Boys and Girls Club and you're not part of the Boys and Girls Club, I mean, that that's just, I don't know, you should not get the tickets and you might need to spend six months in jail. You should. Uh, six uh, months in jail. Honestly, so what happens if it comes out that Iowa Athletic Department, that, they, were, that they bought them? Non fraudulent, fraudulently. Yeah. Then I'm suing them. Sue. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're getting sued. For yeah, that. hold on, hold on. Six to eight grand. Hey, JG Wentworth. Out my neck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Out my, Ow my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all we got in rapid fire? Let me double check. That's all we got. All, all right. right, let's. All right, we are taking calls, guys, in five minutes. So get ready. It's one eight five five two three six three two two eight, and we got all access today. Typically. We do it on Thursdays, but we were traveling yesterday. It was a travel day. If you Major League Baseball fans, y'all know what that is. Uh, we're having all access to, all access today at 1130 Central, 1230 Eastern. Uh, we go for an hour. Come check us out. Go to the Daily Wire Plus. Make sure you subscribe like you are on YouTube. So we are taking calls in five minutes. Five minutes. Flaming. Flaming. No. Mm. No, nah, we're at two. Okay. It's look. Well, you can't I'm say locked. it. Yeah. That means we get one added back. Yeah, no. he says, I almost mm-hmm. said it. We can, See? Uh-huh. Move on. Mm-hmm. Booster Club. Okay, I don't first thing, Bubbly Gut. Okay, Bubbly Gut really wants you, wants you to apologize for calling Brock Purdy soft. Calling Brock Purdy soft? He wants you to apologize. I'm not the one that called him soft. I said I thought it was a bad look and that I thought he had more dog in him than, than what he had. Okay. You called him soft. Yeah, I did. That is okay. true. That was, yeah, I that, that was I also said off. what? Unless it's what? Torn. Or which you did say that. Okay. Again. Which, why is he in I the was, football game? Yeah, I was <laughs> Why not, are you in the football yeah, game? I was not story. saying that Brock Purdy wasn't hurt. What I'm saying was I didn't like the way that he went over to the sideline and was throwing the ball and it looked like he was just kind of, you know, it's whatever that I'm not going back in and then I'm going back in to hand the ball off. Mm -hmm. I thought the way Patrick Mahomes handled his injury Mm -hmm. and the way Brock Purdy handled his injury were totally different. I'm not saying he even should have gone back out there, but I'm watching you throw the ball on the sidelines. Don't tell me you can't throw the ball. Okay, or that, oh, no, you can't do this or you can't do that. Or at least attempt to and make me have to tell you no. That's what I was talking about. All this, I've been the biggest Brock Purdy. Yeah, you have. Positivity you have. guy have. of all time. So get off my ass about this one a little bit. <laughs> one thing okay? you said about him that was right, though, is you said uh, he looked like a deer in headlights. Over he did. Time, which was true, which if I just tore my elbow, maybe I would too. I'm not saying I wouldn't, but that part was factual. There was a lot of bad energy going on on the 49ers. A ton silent. of bad Jimmy energy. Garoppolo's over there laughing, laughing. smiling. Yeah. I, I already take issue with that. I'm sorry. I don't care if you thought you were going to be the guy or if you already have one foot out the door and maybe you've already been contacted by Stephen Ross and you're going to be the Dolphins quarterback next week. I don't care. <laughs> you're down by 30. You can't be on the sidelines yeah, laughing and, and it up. I don't think Brock, Part, Brock Purdy is soft. I thought he just, being a guy that was Mr. Irrelevant, that came in that nobody gave a chance, that guy getting an injury on the field, I feel like you would have had to drag his dead body off the field for him not to be able to get in there and throw the ball down the field. Because I don't know if I could have said, you know what, Coach, yeah, I'll go in there and hand it off every play. I would have looked at him and said, Coach, I cannot throw. We are not going to be able to move the ball. Put Christian or somebody or Debo at quarterback to do something. Just, I just feel like you have a little more dog in you than that. I don't think that's a crazy thing to say. I don't think he's soft. He's just not as tough as what I thought. Or at least right. the mindset isn't what I thought. All right, let's go to Greg Hart with the $5 donation. Appreciate it, Greg. It says, Aaron Rodgers was asked for an update at a golf tournament. He says, I'm not going to San Francisco. Greg says he's now dead inside. Well, look, again, <laughs> it's congratulations on being dead inside. It's a lot harder to kill you now. I think San Francisco is going to go with Brock. I, I think they are. I think they are. I mean, look, you got Tommy John, and but you do have an off season, and you've had experience. Uh, Aaron, a lot of people want Aaron to go to San Francisco, San Francisco, because then he grew up a fan. Of, he, of the and Niners. he's from there. Yeah, yeah and he yeah, got pissed from. when they didn't draft him. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So maybe you know, again, uh, how it depends on what type of person you are. Do you want to go to the place that spurns you and and bring them, you know, prominence and Super Bowls, or do you want to beat the team that spurned? I feel like Aaron Rodgers is on is the last. The villain. He would They've rather. kind of been, 49ers have kind of been getting him in the postseason, though. Oh, no, That's I what's know. Interesting I know. But it. do you think he Aaron Rodgers is the type where, oh, you've been getting me, so I'm gonna join you? I think Aaron mm. Rodgers is the opposite. Yeah. I think Aaron Rodgers is I'll play you by myself. 
like yeah. to try and beat you. That's why I think Aaron Rodgers is. All right, let's go to Homeless Aunt Jemima with a $10 donation. Nice. Homeless Aunt Jemima. Hey, Matt, you sold a lot of syrup. How the hell do you not have a home? This is true. <laughs> this says, Jake, hand over your man card. All right. That puppy and duckling video was awful. What? I, I don't even know what video that is. No sarcastic apology about how, how you care or just saying I'm wrong will get you out of this one. Blaine is the superior one now. So I'll take the end what? of it. I don't know what, what is this? Comments. There's a video of a puppy that was walking with these ducklings and he would pick them up and carry them and set them okay. down. Look, I love animals. Okay? I love, I'll love. i be the first one to say it. What's All wrong right? with that video? Something's I don't think awesome. anything's wrong with that. I think homeless and Jemima, I'm starting to realize why they don't have a home. Because <laughs> they have takes like that. But we appreciate the $10. Maybe you should spend that $10 on getting a home. But th that's that's just me. If you don't like puppies and ducklings together, I'm sorry. Like that, that's, I love animals. I'm an animal lover. Now, not like I'm going to chain myself to a basketball goal before an NBA game. Don't do that. Like that. I mean, I'm going to go eat a steak tonight. <laughs> let's be honest. I love animals and I also love the way some animals taste. All right, let's just look. <laughs> Really right, Travis Alrod wants to know if Ben Shapiro comes on the show Friday, does he have to follow the Flaming Dragon rule? Obviously. Of course he does. Look, Ben's going to do what Ben wants to do, and, and, and you're not going to say it. And, and follow I think the Flaming ben Dragon rule. Do it. Yeah. He's called you Flaming Dragon before. Exactly. So, That's I mean, all I'm just, saying to Blaine right now. It's, 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 it's almost... <laughs> Is that three? That's three. three. Okay. One right. away. Hey, we got how much? Okay, good. We're, good. We're in the back half. But if Look, we hit this, I want to hit it by the hook. If we hit this over, best believe we're going to say your name as many times as possible to really get that handicap Well, this is what Let's we'll stop do. talking we've about it. We've already said it. So we've talked about it in the Booster Club. Let, we'll start having separate over-unders. Yeah, well, here we go. Look, we're three. not ha hitting the we over. Let's just stop talking about it. This is half the problem. All right, we are taking calls now. Please, <laughs> say God, the number. Cody distract wants to know the me. number. one 855 here we go. Hold on. 1-855-236-3228. That's 1-855-236-3228. Extension go, Flaming Dragon. Ex extension Flaming Dragon. Yes, it's very easy. Remember, we got all access as well. Let's uh, let's let's go, let's do our Pro Bowl thing. I wanted to. We, like, we said Tyler ball. Huntley made the Pro Bowl, right? Yes. Two touchdown passes, three interceptions, 600 passing yards, which was what 40. 48, 46, mm -hmm. something like that in the league. Keep in mind, there are only 32 teams. So he's a pro bowler. So I wanted to see if you guys would list off a few things that you would rather watch this weekend other than the pro bowl. Which we know now the pro bowl is what, a skills challenge and a flag football, flag football game, game. And, and, you know, probably, I, I'm not even going to get into that. Here are the three things that I would much rather watch than have to watch anything associated with the pro bowl anymore, whether it's flag football or not. Number one, the people go up to the counter and, and check out at the DMV. Mm -hmm. I'd much rather be sitting down in the DMV Ooh. just watching people, watching those numbers go down, right? Take a ticket. Here you go. Here, let's wait an hour for everybody. That's number one. Number two, Amy Schumer do stand-up. No, This is lying. the only way I could watch it. I would you're much lying. rather watch that than watch whatever's going to happen at the Pro Bowl, even though it's awful and she's not funny. Amy Schumer is not funny. I'm sorry, not to Amy Schumer, but if you think Amy Schumer's funny, we have totally different senses of humor. And then number one. The number one thing I would rather watch than the absolute dogged horribleness of this Pro Bowl. My mom kissed someone other than my father. I'd rather oh, see that. Oh, wow. Ew. You're, that's that's how much I don't want to watch the, the Pro Bowl. That's how much I don't want to watch the Pro Bowl. FD? Well, first thing is going to be Joe Biden trying to read a page of a Harry Potter book. <laughs> A Harry Potter book? Our I would love can to watch that. Us, can you give us an excerpt of what that would sound like? Come on, man. <laughs> A bunch you of know, the, that's the, the thing like. with the wand and yeah. the goblet. The guy who's a girl. Now he's a guy. Girl. Corn pop, corn pop, Harry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd rather watch. I was the, a wizard. I'd rather watch the View. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. No, you would not wow, rather watch. The I would view. love to watch Whoopi Goldberg be racist for an hour and a half. You would watch. not rather watch the View. Yeah, than the flag I'd rather football. watch the View to be honest. And then Rick Barnes blowing the NCAA tournament. <laughs> Can't wait for that. <laughs> Is Tennessee going to do days. that again? Yeah. Is that going to happen? I believe in them. Yeah. They got to win in something. You believed in last year. You believed in last year, yeah. How did that yeah. work for you? How yeah. did that work out for you? Not well. All right, here's the three things I'd rather watch than the Pro Bowl this weekend. A 24-hour marathon of the other guys. I would rather really? watch the 24-hour marathon of the other guys because at least I could call it's you guys over. Bad. We could have steaks, and we, you know, it'd be a good time. Well, I'm so down for that. Second one, I'd rather watch Replacement Cone co-host Crane and Company <laughs> for an entire week. Really? Now, not longer than that. It's good time. I'm going to pick the Pro Bowl. But day. a week, we can listen to that. Yeah, I feel week. like he needs a chain. And then, um, hold on, let me make sure because I don't even want to take any chances here. on. Yeah, 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 Cone, we got to be careful. Um, all right, last one. 
what I would rather watch than the Pro Bowl. Here we go. I would rather watch okay. Flaming Dragons January victory speech. No. Yes. Yes. You're going to watch. Are we getting the victory speech today? That is today, yes. Okay, and, and speaking of that, we're, we're going to start answering those calls here in about 11 minutes. Make sure you call in. Uh, throw that number on the screen again because it's for some reason in my head it's blocked. It's 1-855-236-3228. Flaming Dragon. Yes. It is Friday. We have moved. It's mid to Wednesday, but since yeah. we were at the Senior Bowl, mm -hmm. you want to go up there and go ahead? And, I would love to. First of all, I'm on short did. notice, guys. So I thought in my head, I got Mitch's just by a booster club. We're going to do food. It's the mid. food edition. The food of edition. It's food edition. I cannot of wait it's for mid this. Yeah, this. Let, let me let me hear the blasphemy on. I'm this. going to go ahead and get this thing flown in over here. You get that podium there now. Remember, we cannot say his name, David. We're I did biceps. Great. It's 720. We're still on the under. No, so we got 40 minutes of concentration, focus, and Play focus. the graphic. Okay. We don't want to play the graphic. I it's a long know. time. It's, well, no, not in the span of time. It's a long time. All right, it's mid. Hit the graphic. <laughs> the beard's coming back, too. All right. First thing we got, it's Bojangles, okay? What? But let me explain to you the story. I've never been to Bojangles, all right? In my entire life, the only thing I've heard on the ride down there is Bojangles this, Bojangles that, the Cajun chicken biscuit in the morning. Fire. Yeah, fire. It's fire. So we go there. I get a sausage, egg, and cheese. The easiest order ever when it comes to breakfast food. They don't put sausage on my biscuit. So now, Justine tried to say, well, I didn't order it. I was sitting right there. I, I heard you order it. So now I will never go to Bojangles again. I'll go to Bojangles And I will every never day. forgive you for what you've done. All right, second thing. <laughs> this is going to be a lot of controversy, but Oreos. This is your, all right, no credibility. They're not good. All credibility Unless, out the window. All Unless credibility out the window. you get the vanilla Oreo. Uh, the vanilla yes. Oreo yes. Yes. All credibility is a top-tier uh, Oreo. Listen, Other than that, the, the, the black Oreo is just not that good. Don't turn this into something it's not. All right, don't do it. I know what you are thinking. Don't do that. The vanilla Oreo, Oreo is, is the way Let's to go. Okay? This turkey in general. I want to puke. All right, turkey in general. There's a reason why we really only celebrate eating turkey one day out of the year. All right? Because turkey is mid. I don't think I've ever seen anybody order a turkey sandwich. And if you did, I don't trust you. <laughs> Darby Lou gets them all the, all time. the time. Darby, I don't trust you. All right? I love you. But I don't trust you. Next. Oh, God. Ice cream cake. All right. Oh, see, now I want to put my hands on you. They don't belong now together. Now I want to put Flaming my hands Dragon, on. Dragon, stop. Just sit up. They don't belong no. together. It's a weird texture. Now the they should be up. separate. Oh, man. They should not be together. The real ones know. The OGs know. You don't miss the, the ice cream with the cake. It's just a weird texture that no one wants to eat. Hold on, hold on. And let's fact. Did you eat ice cream cake at my birthday party? I did not. Oh, I think he did. Did I you did not? not? I, did I think not. he did. I did Good. Not. More for me. 100%. Indeed. All right. The next thing, it's not really that, that far off, is the ice cream sandwich. Ew. Ew. Gross. Why? Ice cream Why? sandwiches are gross? It's, yeah, they're nasty. They're, wow. I don't, I don't want to do it. it. They don't belong in sandwich form. All right? No one wants to put the little chocolate things with the ice cream in the middle. It's just nasty. Just get ice cream. Just get ice cream by itself. Just not mint chocolate. You're a big cookie cake Because that's guy, terrible. Right? Cookie dough is phenomenal. I said cookie cake. Phenomenal. Co communist. Phenomenal. <laughs> you bring cookie dough into this. Yeah, okay, Carl. All right, All right the next thing, and the next thing on the slate here, guys, is chocolate pudding. All what right? is going chocolate on? Pudding. Be a real Southerner <laughs> and eat banana pudding. All right? Banana pudding is the only pudding that should ever be eaten. Chocolate pudding tastes like plastic. It tastes terrible. It's not even, you, you want to tell me that you get the high elevated top tier taste of banana our pudding? Watching and then we have, have to get this chocolate nasty pies. chocolate pudding that's, that, that, that you're basically eating asphalt. It's terrible. <laughs> asphalt? Uh, yeah, you're basically, chocolate you might as well go get a scoop of the road, put it in a bowl, and begin <laughs> to eat it. And that's I what basically what you're now. eating. Okay, next, any other bread than Italian herbs and cheese? I'm sorry. This is me. any other bread. Any other bread, white wheat, just not good. Unless you go to Jersey Mike's and get the parm bread, which is somewhat phenomenal. But Italian herbs, cheese, and bread. I wish I had to eat it every second of the day. I wish I just had a bakery in my back in my back room. I can just go footlongs of Italian herbs and cheese, grab it out, cut it up, and go with that. Um, the next thing, ah, oh God. Well, I was gonna say anything Amy Schumer does as well, Jake. But somehow you beat me to that point. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have brought it up in early in the show. But hey, that's your it's mid to the week. Ice cream sandwiches suck. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> Boo this man. Cody WV said it does taste like plastic. How does chocolate Thank pudding you. taste what? like plastic? It is terrible. Look, guys. I can actually There's somewhat, nothing like a good classic I can actually somewhat understand the chocolate pudding take. But the fact that you called <laughs> Oreos and ice cream cake not yeah. good just 
is so mediocre. wrong in so many ways. I don't even know how to adjust. It's mediocre. Right. There's a couple things to break down there. First off, uh, I will not call Oreos mid. I like Oreos, but I will say the golden Oreo is a top tier. Well, isn't top a golden Oreo an Oreo? Like, what, what, are we, what, what are we saying here? It's so good. A lot of people just use, like, the classic Oreo. The other ones don't call it Oreo because it's white. So, you know, so. How about the mint? The one with the green thing? No, anything you like that mint one? other than tea. I thought the you only, would like that the one. Only, no, no, no. I, if you've ever had thin mint Girl Scout cookies, yes. I can never have another mint, like, chocolate cookie. It kind of tastes like that, close. though. But it's not it, though. Mm. You know? It's not it. All right? Speaking about it, though, we're taking calls uh, here in, wow, approximately six minutes. David Cohn, you know I love you. But let's go to the Booster Club. All right, let's go to uh, Joseph Greenwell. Said that segment was as mid as HBO Velma's. Yes, it was. What's yes. HBO Velma's? It was HBO Velma. Yeah, what is that a show? Is is that about the Scooby Doo chick? That show, yeah, Scooby Doo with Mindy Kaling because she's an Indian woman. Mm, okay. Horrible, horrible reviews. Yeah, I'm sure it's awful. It's like uh, my girlfriend cult. lifestyle is mid turning into Blaine's preferences. Yeah, but it's really. When what, was it not? Yeah, that's <laughs> that's literally, Mike, our friend, the whole point of this segment. Uh, Brad just said ice cream sandwiches are awesome. No, they're not. They're yes, they awesome. are. They're not good. Uh, Andrew, I say the last name says, "Blaine, bring your mic and clean out your locker." Yeah, mm, and okay. the playbook. I well. will. And I will. Playbook as well. I will. I'm getting some calls from other coaches, anyways. Um, Charles Moore says, "Regular Oreos mid, double stuff Oreos top tier." How can you say regular Oreos are mid and then take two Oreos and put them together and say that's fantastic? That doesn't make sense to me. Why, why can't it be both? Just both are fantastic. Oreos are the Pringles of cookies. They're the best cookie. I'm sorry. Oreos? Oreos. The best David cookie. Mills says, try yeah. an ice cream sandwich with mint chocolate chip ice cream in it. Get out! Oh, dude, that sounds Get fantastic. Out. How dare you? So what was this Bojangles hate? You, y'all took him to Bojangles? He, we, I love Bojangles. I will stand on the mountaintops and scream that I love Bojangles. I like their hash browns. I like the Cajun chicken biscuit. I like their Cajun chicken sandwich. All right, spiced chicken sandwich, whatever the hell you want to call it. Bojangles is good. I like the fries. This man over here, this is the same guy who would rather just eat a double cheeseburger from McDonald's than anything. Mm. So he's really got no. What? You do have no, to get so over I don't even get a double cheeseburger. You have to get over. Excuse me, a mint chicken. This is lower on the totem pole than the double you cheeseburger. You have to get over the turkey hate. You really have a thing for turkey. Well, this but is, is he wrong? Am I wrong, though, Dave? I like turkey. When's the last time outside of Darby Lou you saw somebody order some, a well, turkey? She eats one multiple times a week. Time. Justine, there you go. PJ. She doesn't count. Why does she count? I don't count. count. Don't Producer invalidate doesn't. her existence. Producer doesn't count. Huh? Um, can you please check your privilege, Flaming Dragon? Check your privilege. I checked yeah. it, and she doesn't count. <laughs> all right, you're hoarding. You're hoarding all the gold. All right, in your little dragon cave. William Devane. <laughs> all right, let's go to Jack the Great. Says, "Hell yeah, brother! Ba- banana pudding is the goat. It is banana pudding. Nobody it's is goated. arguing. Nobody yeah. is arguing. Goated. Banana p- pudding. Chocolate pud- pudding medium. isn't elite. It's medium. Nobody will know? argue that. But I, I don't think chocolate pudding." Tastes like plastic. How do you and know what our grandmother plastic? is going to be pissed if she hears this? Mock, I hope you're not listening. What do you mean? I really hope what you're do you not mean? listening. She, she makes, does nothing but make chocolate pudding pies. Banana pie, pudding. Like. She makes banana. She doesn't make banana pudding. She does. There you did it. That's all four. Hey. That's all four on him. See, you get him going, right? That's you all him four on him. Bit, then he forgets, right? Preparation. That's what it is. See, mental preparation. That's yeah. what it is. You look. Do it. I'm still at zero. Keep, David didn't say it once. <laughs> you know, yes. I don't so, want to do the rest of the show. How do yes. you know what plastic tastes like? Huh? How do you have? How do you compare chocolate pudding to plastic? Have you eaten it? You've never tasted plastic? I don't eat it. Come on, man. You've never plastic. tasted it through your fingers? Man, I guess I eat stuff with a plastic spoon yeah. when I'm getting the flavor of the food. Yeah, I may not talk to him any plastic. other Friday. Are you done? Like, outside of just asking him to go to the booster club. Golly. Because that's it's BS that it's three and a half. For two people, for two. Oh, okay. That's BS. Here we go. All right, you can't BS a BS. Start pointing the finger. All right, with your BS. Would you, like to, uh, would you like to make up for it by taking a call? Yes, I would. Okay. Anything but what's going on. First call coming in from Brianna. Brianna's calling in from Houston. Let's set the tone on a Friday here. Brianna, what do you have for us? Good morning, guys. Happy Flaming Dragon Friday. Happy Good Flaming Dragon, Dragon Friday. Friday. Yep, yep. Welcome to the trust tree. Uh, how does the offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator cohesion impact Bama's play and growth over the next year? Mm-hmm. 
Uh, that's that's a great question. A lot of it, during the game, I mean, you're playing against a different side of the ball. You know, you want to root each other on. Sometimes you'll have coaches on the offensive side looking at things for the defensive coaches or maybe make a suggestion, hey, I'm seeing this or they're doing this uh, because we're doing that. But really the cohesion takes place in prepping practice and at practice to build that competition level up between the offense and defense, but not let it spill over to where it negatively impacts the team. But a lot of it is structural. And what do I mean by that? All right, we're going to be running this. Y'all are going to be running that. What can we do for each other to get the most out of each period where we're together? Whether that be team periods like seven on seven or true team period, 11 versus 11, or inside drill. I'm not talking about one-on-ones or any pre-practice stuff, but how well do they put together a practice? That's one of the things that Nick Saban is the best at in the world. It's not just structuring the roster and roster management. It's structuring practice where you get all the juice out of the squeeze on each side of the ball. Because what happens before a practice is the offensive coordinator and the defensive coordinator get together. And they say, hey, for this set, I'm running this, 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 and that. And they kind of do it like this. We'd have times during the weekend game planning, David, where we'd have the def- the offensive coaches come in and say, hey, when you guys are, are doing the, the scout stuff, I need y'all to be heavier with the corners than what y'all normally are in quarters, mm-hmm. all right? Uh, because that's how they play it. So the cohesion is really prepping for practice. That's where you're going to see it the most, uh, Brianna. That's It's a fantastic question. During the game, you're really just kind of on the same team in separate areas, if that makes sense. I think you're about to see Alabama's defense really take a step forward. I think Nick Saban, with those last two national championships that he's won, the one in 17 and then the one in 20, he had this sort of, you know, high-flying offense, which was different for him when he was winning his early national championships. Now he's seen Kirby Smart go back-to-back at Georgia by having the best defense in the country. I think you're about to see him turn the screws in on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, I I wouldn't be shocked with Nick Saban. It's, It's a revenge tour. Brianna, did that answer your question well enough? Absolutely. And, you know, we all know the Bears used to say defenses win championships. So I'm excited to see what they do this next year. Still true. That's exactly right. That's ex- Offense sells tickets. Yep. Defense wins championships. It'll always be that way. Brianna, be careful out there in Houston. That's an elite call. Right? Thank, That's you, an uh, elite thank you, Brianna. That's the Houston way to set the tone on Friday. <laughs> Houston coming in hot early. I like that. I love. I love it. All right, let's go to Paul. Paul's calling in from Virginia. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, Cranko, I'm back. Happy Slinging Dragon Friday. Happy sure, Flaming Paul. Dragon Friday, Paul. Paul. What's up? Uh, well, playing. You can't say Bojangles is mid. Come on. I know. I know. I can. Somebody wrote, I can. I can. Who I this ordered, man? I ordered from it. One, been there one time. How do you mess up a sausage egg and biscuit and not put the sausage on there? Hold on, hey, hey, producer you Justine. Breakfast at a chicken place. Yeah. <laughs> Only thing I got told, Paul, was how elite the breakfast was by him and her. So I'm sorry if hey, I got I misinformation think. told to me, right? And I don't know how they you, see it in me. Did. Yeah, Blaine, Blaine's the same guy who will order cheese sticks at a Chinese um, restaurant. Yeah. I've you actually seen him do that before. If, if you come down to Hampton City where I'm at right now and you say that, you're going to get Oh, yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> Put that in my map ledger. We, we love Bojangles down here. <laughs> Look, I got one um, really to close point, to my house, so I, I want to love it. I won't really want to. Yeah. Uh, but to my point, uh, David, congrats on keeping Harbaugh. He's a great coach. I'm really upset about not getting him. Uh, I think Broncos country is a bit too hyped about Sean Payton. There's a lot more questions and answers. And the team is not – it's not like the team was a coach away from being – the Super Bowl contender. Yeah. Maybe we need to play off. Uh, but th- two sort of quick questions. Where is Denver? Si- I want you to set the record straight. Where is Denver sitting in the AFC and AFC West? And if you're Denver, would you rather take a flyer on a QB in this draft from what you guys saw at Mobile? Or what I think they should do, recoup a couple picks and trade for Trey Lance so if Wilson is washed, mm. you don't have to worry about being bad enough for Williams or May in the next draft. Well, you know, I, I think if, if everything could go the way that you wanted to answer the second question first, I don't think anybody's going to take Russell Wilson right now and eat any of that money. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think there's anybody out there that's going to do it. They would much rather go take a kid from the draft or maybe take a shot on Trey Lance. When, when, it, when we, we look at the Broncos and where they're at in the AFC West, I mean, the Chiefs, we know what the Chiefs are. That's, that's, there's no arguing what yeah. the Chiefs have done since Patrick came in. They are the dominant force in the AFC, including the AFC West. The Raiders, 
have some questions. Obviously, at quarterback, I think the Raiders and I think the Broncos are actually in a little bit of a better spot than the Raiders. Uh, I would put them right now. I, I would take my money on the Broncos over the Raiders because of the quarterback situation. Is this an, an anomaly year for Russell Wilson? I don't think so, but it might be. And then, obviously, the Chargers. It's the Chiefs, the Chargers, the Broncos, then the Raiders to me. Uh, even though I, I feel like Brandon Staley isn't a great head coach out there uh, for the Chargers. You know, they kept him. They fired the OC. But I don't think anybody would take Russell Wilson. I do feel like, though, that if the Broncos add a couple pieces, that defense is good enough mm -hmm. to be able to get them in the playoffs and maybe win a game or two. But if you're yeah. Sean Payton, the reason you took this job is because you had all the leverage and it was basically a hostage negotiation. They're gonna pay you 20 to $25 million. You're not gonna be tied to what Russell Wilson does. So it's a win-win. Because I think deep down, Sean Payton thinks that Mike McCarthy's gonna get fired next year and was gonna hold out for that Cowboys job, but just got such a good offer from the Broncos, which is a big brand name, and we've seen that Denver can win, that he couldn't turn down that oh, yeah, type of money you. and that type of security. Oh, but I'm yeah, with you. I don't think with what they have right now, they're gonna be able to win it, win a damn thing, to be honest with you, Paul. Yeah, so Paul, no, could, no, could, no. Paul, could we find out yeah, in three ahead. seasons that a lot of Sean Payton's greatness <laughs> was due to Drew Brees? Sure. We could find that out. But I, I like this move from Denver. Look, you paid Russell Wilson $240 million. You traded, what, two first rounds, two second rounds? I think you had to go all in on a great offensive-minded coach to come in and just throw all the chips on the table and say, we're going to lay everything out and try and be great here. Now, you're, it is the toughest division in pro football. I do understand that. But I still think you have the quarterback position shirt up. Do they go draft somebody for down the line? Possibly. Yes. But I would rather be the head coach at the, with the Denver Broncos right now with Russell Wilson than to go take the Cardinals job that we were talking about with Kyler Murray than to take the Colts yeah. job right now. I mean, the Colts job with the number four pick is interesting because you could go get someone like a C.J. Stroud, possibly trade up. I don't know exactly what they're going to do. I just, I like this move from Denver. Man, you, you had to. I mean, yeah. you, I mean, sooner or later you had to make a move, but there is a sneaky name when it comes to quarterback. Tyson Badgett from Shepard, yeah. right, who's probably going to go late in this draft would be a great steal for the Denver Broncos. That's the type of kid that can surprise a lot. Yeah, of and, and I'm going to push back. I don't think the AFC West is the best division in football. I think it's the NFC East. Yeah, well, I think the Cowboys this past Giants, season. This past season, yeah. for sure. And going into next season, I will still sit. Now that the Giants figured it out at quarterback, we'll see what Washington does. But, I mean, having a division with the Cowboys, the Giants, and the Eagles, mm -hmm. I know the commanders aren't great, but damn, I mean, that's... Well, the Chiefs aren't going anywhere. Yep. I think the Chargers are only going to get better, even though I, I, you know, I'm not on the Brandon Staley track. I'd almost rather be, I'd almost rather have the situation in Denver right now with the Sean Payton and Russell Wilson really? connect and just see. I just don't think Brandon Staley is going to be the guy to lead the Chargers. I don't to think the he promise is. Either. I, I think Justin that. Herbert's that guy now. Yeah. But is Brandon Staley that guy? I don't guy? think he is. I don't think he is. But Paul, we appreciate the call. I didn't mean for that to rhyme. Thanks so much, Paul. Appreciate it, man. All right, Cody. Let's go to Cody calling in from Illinois. Cody, what do you have for us? All right, guys, I want to do something called Name That Recruit. I'm going to okay. read a recruiting profile, and you guys are going to tell me who it is. Can we do like, that? Is it, is it in this class, or is it somebody that's, like, in the NFL now? No, no. So it's from Tom Lemming's Prep Football Report, summer of 2005. Summer of 2005. <laughs> oh, great. Okay, yeah. all right, here we go. All right, here's a ball player who is always ranked as one of the better quarterbacks in the state of Georgia. But he really came on strong at a couple of summer camps, and his stock has soared. On film, he reminds you of former Michigan quarterback Elvis Gerbach. Gerbach. He's a tall, lanky QB who performs in a wishbone offense in high school. <laughs> he led his team to the state championship, showing a good arm, smarts, a quick release, and very quick feet. He does a good job of escaping the pocket, rolling out, and really? running for plus yardage. Good God! A very competitive ball player and a diamond in the rough as a QB with a tremendous upside, thus the four stars, and possibly five by the end of the season. Completed 130 passes for 1,020 yards and eight TDs in 15 games as a junior. His GPA is over 3.5. Wow. After a kid. great showing at this summer camp, he committed to the Wolverines. At six foot six. 210 pounds. Tree. Running a 478 40. Four, okay. Who do we have? Wait, uh, is, he now, is he now? Matt Hasselbeck. Is he now? Tim is Tebow. He, is he now a father of two? <laughs> he sure is. Is it David Cohn, a.k.a. David Michigan? 
David Michigan. Cody, I love Dave. Four four seven. Okay. Dude, uh, for a second, I was thinking he was talking about Deshaun Watson until he said tall and lanky. I'm like, Deshaun Watson played high school. (laughs) A few things there, Cody. One, thank you. That was phenomenal to relive that. Second of all, I have never sniffed four seven in the forty, but I appreciate the effort there for them to write the nice things about me. <laughs> that John Denver's full of. <laughs> I've always, I've always heard uh, Tom Lemming is, is favorable with his uh, his numbers. Very favorable. Look, you're five yeah. star and Heisman, and you were a Heisman. Come candidate. on, man. Let's over go. Three, over three point five GPA. You can make a career out of that. Look, nice little yeah. life. I'd love to you know? meet that guy. I love that, Six. Cody. Cody, that's great stuff, man. Let's uh, uh, call in again. Will do. All right, brother. Thanks, thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. All right, let's go to Daniel. Daniel calling in from Knoxville. Knox Vegas. Maybe we'll sing uh, Rocky Top today. Let's see. Mm. Man, I, I would if you'd uh, if I thought about that. Even get the banjo out and start playing it for y'all. Look, we go. can do. It. We know the words. Yeah, I mean, it'd be great to hear some Auburn fans sing along, but um, <laughs> someone's got to be Bama, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Hey, hey, hey. You beat him, Bama you beat him one anybody. time in 30 years. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. No, I'm just kidding. Hey. Go, go ahead. Hey, you know, hey, it's all good. Uh, first of all, um, I go by Saved by the Clavin. So, um, oh, as a okay. Team Blind um, mm. and Flaming Dragon. I got to ask you, man, who goes to Bojangles and doesn't order a chicken sandwich? I know. Yeah. Change that. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Change that we got to open Daniel. this up. Okay. Okay. Get that I know badge. nothing Sorry, about Bojangles. <laughs> I know nothing about Bojangles. Never eaten there. Never thought about. Why don't you go to there. Mexican restaurant and order some? Can I finish chicken? this, Stephen A. Smith, for a second, please? <laughs> Thank you. Stephen A. Smith. Okay. I got told that they have great breakfast food. Okay. And on our trip, when we went down to the Senior Bowl, we saw one after we picked Jacob. That was right next to where he lived, which I can't disclose that information. Hey, you want to tell? But we went there. But we went there. All right. And I didn't know what to order, so I just let them order what they usually get. So they got me a sausage, egg, and cheese, and they didn't put. Put any sausage on it. I didn't know you're supposed to get like a bow berry something sandwich or like the steak sandwich or anything like that. The bow berry biscuit, excuse me. I didn't know any of these things. If I got told the right thing, not a bunch of misinformation, all right, from the DOJ, including Jake and Justine, maybe I would have got that. So do I feel bad about it? No, because I was told wrong. Well, maybe maybe they were so shocked they didn't know what the word sausage meant. So they thought you just well, said because nobody would ever order sausage. Huh? How was the egg and the biscuit? I couldn't enjoy it because they didn't put sausage on it. But did it taste good still? It was mediocre. Well, That's I, I was on It's Mid. Oh, my gosh. Daniel, help this guy, man. Um, well, I know. I, I don't know. He, he seems like the guy that goes to Chick Fil A and doesn't get a chicken biscuit. So yeah, I, he goes to Chick Fil A and asks so for a my, burger. There you right. go. <laughs> so my, my so my question is this: I grew up in Atlanta, um, so it's always fun hearing you guys talk about Georgia Southern and all that. But as a Falcons fan, I am statistically more likely to make it in the NFL, and I've never played a down of football in my life <laughs> than the Falcons are at losing games. Like, yeah, I think there's that Cowboys game they lost a couple of years ago. Like they they came out and said I could be, I could start for the Texans before the Falcons should have lost that game. So, should I stick with them? And what do they need to do to where it doesn't feel like Tom Brady stole our soul in the Super Bowl? What, what, what do we yeah. need to do? And that's, Look, that's that, all I got. I love what you guys do. Thank you. Daniel, I uh, appreciate it. Yeah, you got to stick with them, man. You, you got to stick with them through thick and thin. The bad times are what, what make the great times so great. You know, I mean, if it was just as easy as bouncing around for as long. Think about Cubs fans. Before they won it, they went like 612. The last time they won it, Columbus was on a ship coming over here. All right, Red Sox fans. Okay, they won it days before they dumped all the tea in the Boston Harbor. That's the last time they won it. So sticking around with your team, as hard as it may be, as hard as it may be, it makes the great times great. Imagine if the Lions win next year after all the. And I know I feel like I talk about Detroit every day on here. I just I feel like those poor fans need something. Somebody win. Like, but but but. But what the Falcons need is a lot. I don't believe in Desmond Ritter, all right? I don't, I don't think the Falcons, I mean, look, Kyle Pitts, it hasn't worked out. I feel like this is a rebuild that basically needs another rebuild. Mm. I mean, you got Cordell Patterson. I mean, you got some pieces. It just feels like you tried to rebuild it, and you had the has, house halfway built, and then a hur- hurricane came and hit it, and now you got to redo it. Well, you're a right? Tennessee fan, so you understand, right? You understand the feeling of, being good, then not good, then being good. How good did it feel to win 10 games this year? Yeah. You know, you stuck around. You beat Bama. Y'all were selling grass off the field. Mm-hmm. That's how good it must have felt. Y'all threw a goalpost so just, in a river. Yeah, just hang tight, man. Look, from an Auburn fan, just hang tight. The glory days are coming. Even Rome fell, all right? <laughs> Sooner or later, they will fall. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's go to Randy. Randy's calling in from Michigan. What do you have for us, Randy? Colin? 
Hey, how's it going, guys? Randy, Randy well, what's up? Uh, hey, the trust tree is uh, its hugging me tight this morning. Good. Oh, that that you. warms there my heart go, in ways buddy. you'll never understand. Love to hear it. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, quick, before I get into my question, uh, I know we've talked before. This is RN, a.k.a. Hey Nordo, in the chat and on mm. Twitter. So, yes, sir. Uh, hey, Coney, uh, congrats on the baby. I hope the family is doing well. Thank you, uh, sir. You know, I appreciate you guys and what you do. Um, my oldest son, he, he listens with me on our way to school uh, before he goes to school and stuff. So I was just hoping before I got to the question, you could give him a shout out. So when he's yeah. listening later, yeah. then he'll, he'll have that. To be What's, his What's his name? His name's Braylon. 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 What's, What's up, man? Braylon? Listen Guys to your Fanning father, Co. Braylon. Father's Hope a smart a great guy. Day at school. <laughs> yep. Enjoy school. Learn. Be smart. Do your homework. Yes. <laughs> There we go. There we go. Thanks, fellas. So listen, hey, when I called last time, we talked about Harbaugh. Yep. And, uh, it, you know, that was right before he he signed his uh, extension there and uh, the president got involved. I'm going to flip scripts here now. We're going to talk basketball. Mm, and uh, I want to know how much leash Jawan Howard gets mm. before we classify him as a mid-coach. I just want to throw some stats at you. Go ahead. All right. His first year, 19 and 12. Second year, phenomenal year, 23 and 5. 19 and 5 the year, 19 and 15 the year after that. This year, 12 and 10. Mm -hmm. I know. Mean, does, does that strike you as a coach that, that should stay? Because to me, I, I can't think of a coach recently who has done less with more with the recruiting classes he gets he can't seem to put it together yeah i, I mean i think him and calipari are kind of in this in the mm. same boat and let's not forget he punched a coach last year he did okay it's not like Thank you're you. winning all these games he, you're winning all these games and there's some off the field problems that they're going to try and just get past because you're winning again i i i believe it's just like patrick ewing okay uh, i'm patrick ewing should have been fired from georgetown a long time ago Okay, just because you hire somebody that either went there or is a high profile, was good in the NBA, just because you were a great player does not mean you're going to be a great coach. I mean, it's sad because in basketball, you only got five guys going out in the court and a lot shorter roster than you do in football. It's easier to flip a program very quickly in college basketball, especially when you recruit at that level. To me, it makes you a bad coach because you get the best recruits and your ass still can't win. Yeah. I know the Big Ten <laughs> is a rock fight in basketball, but I mean, come on, man. Like you've had one good year and you've had Hunter Dickinson one. and and these players that, that are that are, I mean, Buffkin and guys like this that are really, really good players. No, I think Jawan Howard is a mid coach. I think he is a mid coach. And now they had a nice win against Northwestern last night. I'll give you credit there, but you've had one good year in four. It's college basketball and you recruit at a super high level. To me, it's not the players. It's you, bro. Well, uh, John Beeline. Yeah, if, if Hunter John, Dickinson, yeah, how has he not been able to to progress? He has digressed more than mm -hmm. anything else and hurt his draft stock by staying. And you yeah. would have thought that with a coach like Juwan Howard, that he would have been elevated and you know he'd be a, a surefire top five pick. Yeah, and his digression, I think, it clearly points to coaching. John Beeline was an elite basketball coach, and I think that yes. Michigan fans now especially need to appreciate the greatness of John Beeline. One thing about Jawan Howard, though, I would have reserv reservations about firing him after this season because he is always going to be able to get high-level recruits in there. Now, if he continues to not develop them, that's something that we can stay on top of. But he is going to get big-time recruits in there. And I feel like mm -hmm. the Michigan football team, especially during the era of Rich Rodriguez, kind of showed that that recalibrate, recalibrated the attitude of Michigan, saying it can always be worse. So, you know, we're going to stay, you know, we're going to stay with John, uh, Jim Harbaugh. And then what happens? He makes back to back playoffs. Yeah. You know, there could be a similar, uh, similar situation with Jawan Howard where, you know, you have to endure a couple 15 and 12 seasons, something like that, making the NIT for him to break out and make a couple final fours, even though I don't think he will reach the level that John Beeline had at that point. No, no, I don't. I think John Beeline was, is actually underrated and mm -hmm. comes out smelling like roses. And he didn't punch anybody after a game. John, uh, Randy, appreciate go. it. Thanks appreciate so much for call, calling brother. in, Randy. Hey, absolutely love it. Thanks, guys. See All you, right, buddy. See you. All right, let's go to John. John is call, calling in from Auburn. From Auburn? All from the Plains here, God's boys. country. 
What's going on, guys? Just uh, wanted to say I'm doing D Jack and Tan on Flaming Dragon Friday. Good. Good. Another one, one for it. the horde. Yeah, uh, it's mid today. Not mid, but you know, it is mid. Mama G's just had to say it. <sighs> Thank oh, you. Hi, oh, right, John, John. Thanks for calling. John. Thanks for calling, John. See, the John. real ones know. The no. OGs know. John, you know. I, I mean, have to sit here it's and listen a, the to environment, and Bojangles the environment, and Mama Goldberg. Phenomenal. The environment's phenomenal. The sandwich, mid, just because you put Doritos in the oven and put cheese on it doesn't mean you're Bobby Flay. It's a mediocre food place. <laughs> I just, I don't even know yeah, where well, to go I from here, John. If I want to watch a beer and watch the game, I'll go to halftime or Moe's or I can get some wings, you know? Hey, you know what? Hey, let's no, be honest. I'm going to in the garage. John, do you remember touchdowns? Did you ever go to touchdowns? No, I got there probably after it closed. Back, I was back, in, back the in the day. I know they changed it to something else. Man, I used to love Y'all had a touchdowns, touchdowns too? Yeah. Uh, we had one in Ann Arbor that got shut down too. Touchdowns. Every college town has a, a touchdowns. Yeah, it turns out they couldn't get in the end zone. <laughs> so go, uh, go, go ahead, John. Yeah, but anyway, my question is, uh, you know, as an Auburn fan, um, obviously, um, I just wanted to ask if y'all are worried about Bruce Pearl and his development of players, because, I mean, we've seen, you know, guys have been there for three or four years, like, you know, Jalen uh, Williams, you know, Alan Flanagan. I know they've come on recently, but I haven't been super impressed, uh, you know, over the past three or four years. So, yeah. I mean, are we kind of turning into like a one and done kind of Kentucky-like program where we get, you know, superstars and then you know, maybe not able to build a, um, like a strong roster or what? Yeah, well, I, I, to me, I think the perfect blend is having a nice mix of that superstar talent and those guys that have been there and like the role players, right? The problem with Auburn this year, okay, is, is that they have a bunch of role players and no elite players. Last year, you had Walker Kessler and Jabari Smith and role players around them. You just played bad at a, at a bad time, I think, at the end of the year with as hot as they were to begin the year. Sometimes it happens like that. But to me, I think you can't go too heavy either way. I don't think you can just say, all right, we're going to have a bunch of role players and come together and be tough and this, that, and the other and try and go win a national championship or go to a Final Four. It's not going to happen. And then you can't say, I'm going to get a bunch of prima donnas and just have a bunch of one and dones and try and do it. Why the hell do you think Duke can't win it anymore? Why do you think Kentucky can't win it anymore? I mean, that it's a perfect blend, right? I kind of, I kind of compare it to in college football now mixing the transfer portal with guys that you're developing, right? You want to have a good mix of that. You don't want to be too heavy-handed on either side. You want to kind, of, kind of be balanced with that. But, John, look, you remember Auburn basketball being awful for so long like I do. If we're sitting here complaining about being a top, we're complaining about being 17-5. and five. Let's just make sure that, that we remember that. But the standards should be raised. And I think Bruce will tell you. You look at Chance Westry right now, probably going to redshirt. Trey Orr isn't ready. They missed on some guys that they thought would be ready this year. Now, does that mean they won't figure it out and, and become better players? No. Does that mean they will hit the transfer portal and go somewhere else? Who knows? But look at the way Bruce is recruiting still. You just got one of the you got a top three point guard in the country committed yesterday, and you're about to get LeBaron Phylon, who's a top 40 player in the country from Baker. That's an absolute walking bucket. So, like, it's hard for me, right? to complain about Bruce Pearl when I watch Rob Chubb's goofy ass run up and down the court for a couple of years. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. but did, but yeah. we appreciate – go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I, just, I mean, I just as, – as far as Auburn football fell this yeah. year, I just, you know, I'm glad that Auburn basketball can be somewhat still pretty good. So. Yeah, and we have Hugh Freeze coming on next Wednesday, John. Yep. Make sure you don't miss it. Oh, heck yeah. I'll be there for that. All right, Appreciate bro. it, John. Love Thanks you, John. so much for hey, calling Hey, we'll go to halftime to grab a uh, cold soda one time when I'm down there. See you at Mama Goldberg's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's, uh, that's it for call-ins today. All it's right. time for Blaine's victory speech. Oh. Let's get this out of the way. Oh. Don't no, no, hit no, the no, button no, 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 anymore. No, don't play no, the don't graphic. don't hit the button Blaine, 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 Blaine. I'm getting our handicap moved up here a bit. God is, like, going up. Blaine, Blaine, give your speech, Blaine. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead, Blaine. Goodness great. I'm so pissed at myself, David. I'm sorry, man. Hey. I'm hey, sorry. I believe you. Forgive me. I'm not going Michael Jordan. You. I'm not going to sit here and throw a temper. You're not going to Jermaine. You're no. not going to drink Jermaine a lot and gamble no, no. and go play baseball. No. All right. Play my sound, David. No, I won't, Ryan. Play I my won't. sound, David. Huh? Play my sound. You you want me to play your sound? Play the sound. Because I have a special sound on here for you today. Play the sound. Don't. Hold on. See, that's why we can't give David things. <sighs> oh, hit it. Would like to thank Daily Wire. <laughs> I would like to thank God, and I'd like to thank myself. I'm gonna figure it out. Here again, all right, there's three types of people in this world, right? All right, the, the, those who make it happen, those who watch it happen, and those who complain about what's happening, right? I'm on my Kirby Smart grind right now, one in fantasy, 
Winner, winner. Oh, I didn't bring my golden tumbler up here. And thank you for the fan who sent me that. One in December betting. Surprise? No, I'm not. And surprise again. Up 20 units last month and caught another dub. I said this last month. I'm not losing again. I'm not. I've been taking it easy on these children, right? It's easy. Yeah, play whatever you want to, David. I'm coming again. I'm coming for it all. I'm raiding the pantry. I'm raiding the fridge. A clown deserves right? circus music. Whatever it takes. All I do is win, baby. All I do is win. You see them? They're little babies. They're I've little been kids. in the show. They're little babies. It's easy. Five seconds left to go on the clock. <laughs> Throw me the rock and get out of the way. <laughs> Flaming dragon. That was good. <laughs> Did you like the circus music I added for you? No, I was too focused. For the clown <laughs> On my best and my speech. All right. That was good. That's always fun, even though I absolutely hate it. All right. <laughs> I'm heading over to the Board of Education. Not the Department of Education, because those guys suck. All right. Here's what I got. We hit an NBA bet last night. Thanks, Knicks. Beat the Heat. I also want to tell Ohio State. Uh, I'm going to stand at the podium and let you guys know, how in God's name do you lose to Wisconsin at home? And then at the end, you have a chance to win, and that guy with the dreads, his last name likely, just gives the ball up twice. Now you are likely to lose because you gave him the ball. I'll never trust you, regardless of how many push-ups or sit-ups you can do. So here's what I got tonight. One and three on the month. It's early. We got a long way to go. Give me Penn money line. I own a money line and Nevada minus 11 against the Air Force at home. We're not fighting Jets, so I don't trust them. Then give me the Wizards. Trying to stay hot in the NBA. Minus four at home tonight. Let's get the wands out. You know, swirl it around a couple times and get this dub by six. That's minus 115. <laughs> Flaming Dragon, what do you got? You got me playing at this point. No, nope, hell no. Um, I'm, I'm working. I'm training. All right, give me the now. 76ers, the Celtics, both the money lines. And I'm coming with Nevada minus nine and a half there at home versus Air Force. That's plus 169. And then give me the Wizards to win by one through 10. That is plus 135. They have the Trail Blazers Ooh. at home. Wizards versus the Blazers. That'd be a hell of a fight in real life. Tell so me. my question is, do I give my February victory speech now or at the end of the month? When do I do it? Mm, that's a bold I thought you were O and O type well, of guy. Yeah, I thought you were O and O. I thought you were O and O. No, 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 I'm talking about, guy. no, no, I'm, not ta I'm talking about, oh, you guys didn't hear the strategy yet. Hmm. Okay, because no. because yesterday I went 2 and O. Right, so I hit both my picks yesterday. That was the you UCLA, went yesterday? St. Mary's, Arizona parlay. Wait, I got USC told you went one and one yesterday, so I wrote this down wrong. No, two and zero. Oh. See, stop trying to cheat me. No, see, no, no. The king of getting graphics though. sent me that. I'll show you the evidence. I've got evidence. <clears throat> so two and zero. Oh, so my thing is on the strategy here because that's a one hundred percent, you know, adjusted win percentage. So it can't really get. You went minus two hundred on each bet. Yeah. So. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to, there's no rule on minimum number of bets for the month, right? So I'm just going to offset the rest of February bets into March, and I'm just going to give Booster Club suggestions, 100% win percentage, and then win February. I have no idea what you just said. I'm trying to figure do out it. what you said. 2-0 on the month. Do it. So it's a victory it. in February. Bet. You're not going to bet? No, I'm going to give suggestions to the Booster Club, and that's going to be San Diego State, Ball State, Iona, minus 143, and then Harvard, plus three, minus 105. It's yeah. just strategy. Just a race is best. Those are just, those Wait, are Wait, no, I'm confused. Are you saying your bets don't count? No, it's suggestions. My two they don't yesterday, count. I went 2-0, and oh, yeah. and then I'm not taking any more bets. Yeah. The a race official, is best. Official bets the rest of the month. So it's 100% adjusted win percentage, victory February. All right. Yeah, but what yeah. happens when you have zero units, though, and you can't add that, the units don't add to the matter. adjusted record? Doesn't matter. It does matter. I don't need them. Erase the bets. No need to put them up. Those there. are booster They're club suggestions. suggestions. We don't put okay. suggestions up there, bud. We don't do it. <laughs> you know that. It's a bold right. strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. All right, Baby Cone. He's going with the T-Wolves. Minus five. That's going off at minus 110. And the Jazz. Not the little jazz flute little sissy boys play. Minus 130. Uh, Ask Ron Burgundy. He was never prepared. That is the Board of Education. Oh, 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 oh. Before I forget. Jake Stewart. Yes. All right, I didn't forget today, bud. Yes. Hall of Fame member. I told you I was going to remember. Your name is now on the board forever right up here. And by the way, I know you guys can't see it, but we're about to have a revamped Hall of Fame situation going on on a wall right over here. All right, so get excited for that. Everybody put your hands together and get excited in friendship. What's going on in the Booster Club over there, Flaming Dragon? All right, poll. Poll. Oh, no, I got to get to this first. I'm sorry. You got donation? Titus uh, and Rinson, a $50 what? donation. What? Really? Says, I'm already a Daily Wire all access, all access subscriber, but I wanted to send a gift for new baby Cone. Yes. Oh, thank I'm you. I'm so grateful for helping me reignite my love for sports. You are not mid. And if you're ever in uh, Indiana, 
uh, you are welcome to come on my lawn lawn at any time. There we hey, go. We went to Thank a sports you. book. Uh, I just went to a sports book in Indiana. You me did. And Reed did a couple months ago. You had a good time. Yeah, it was a great time. I really enjoyed it. No, we appreciate that. That's look, man. That's that's what we love doing. Like some, a lot of people have been turned away from sports or haven't watched it as much because they're basically the people at ESPN hate half the country. We don't hate any of the country. We may disagree on stuff, and most of the time it's about sports. But like, we don't hate you. Are because of what you believe. Like, why? How about we talk about sports? And look, sometimes politics and sports intersect. You you have nil that can be looked at as political. I mean, there's there's a lot of different things. And when it intersects, we're going to touch it. Do I think men should be playing in women's sports? No. All right. Now we're not going to sit here and talk about it for eight hours. But if it gets brought up, we're going to tell you what we really think. It doesn't mean we hate you or we think you're an absolute idiot. Now some things I will say, like I think it's stupid that you believe that. But Iowa. again, I'm not from Iowa, not Indiana. From Iowa. Okay, there we go. In Iowa. All, All right, Paul. Right. Paul. Well, Jake and David go over three and a half God. today. David, I'm sorry. Well, that's already so. We, we didn't get to yesterday's poll. Was there a poll yesterday? Wasn't? Didn't we have one yesterday? Or was it mint chocolate? No. I can no. go look. I can go look. We had. Was, was it about? Uh, it was about something important. It's about fighting. That's what it was about. It was about fighting. Yes, I'm pretty interesting. Sure. All right, I'm gonna say they said yes, 65. percent They're probably right. Well, they were right. Well, it already happened, right? Yeah. So it's like. But what do you think? Guessing they, what they said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They probably said, "What well, will we?" What's the question? Will we go over? I'm yes or no? Is the answer is yes. Uh, yes, fifty-one percent. Ooh, yes, seventy-four percent. Yeah, no. guys, look, I'm one and one in my last two. Okay, one and one in our last two. We need to adjust that. Let's put it at five and a half next time between between us. Because here's what I'm doing. I'm not looking over there the whole show. I'm just gonna look at you. I've heard that before. No, I swear. I've heard it. I promise you. I swear by the look in Ken's face. All right, anything All right, else? There's something with David Michigan got 51% yesterday. Um, that's what Ratchet said. David Michigan? I think it was David. What did I put? Who would win a, who would win in a fight between Jake, David Michigan, and Flaming Dragon? Gotcha. I think David Michigan. David Michigan. There you go. David Michigan versus Flaming Dragon. I don't know what would happen. That, that'd be crazy. But I'll tell you what, what else is crazy. If you don't subscribe or follow us on social media, make sure you check us out. Hey, text C-R-A-I-N to 231-231. Get that free bottle of Nugenix and then the, the Thermo, that's the fat incinerator. Uh, it's a great product and a lot of men need it out there uh, as you get older. A lot of people do. It's just a real thing. You don't want to admit it, but you need it. We appreciate you guys. Remember, without you, there is no us. Great job on the call-ins. Monday, all right, got a big show. Uh, got call-ins as well. Get ready for a big list of guests ne- next week. And I do want to give a special thank you to Molly Middleton, uh, Jim Nagy, yes. and our producer, Justine, who did a hell of a job on the road helping all us access. get everything set up. And we got all access Let today uh, at 1130 Central, 1230 Eastern. We appreciate you guys. And like the chances of the ASC West legitimately being the best division in the NFL next year. We're going, going, gone.